Whether you're using technology from the 1850s gold rush. Look at that, that is a solid little flake of gold. Or a modern iteration of the same machine. The hardest part about gold prospecting is not catching it. Oh my god, look at the gold. Almost any piece of gold prospecting equipment will catch gold just fine. That's the amount of gold from one test pan. The truly difficult part is finding it. This was a little bit of a greedy pan. You're relying on mother nature to put all the gold in one spot for you. And sometimes it can take years in the same spot to narrow down where the gold is. Have you ever looked at a spot and thought, geez, I'd like to know what's on the bedrock, but there's way too much overburden? Because that happens to me all the time. And today I've decided to move all of that overburden to find out what's on the bedrock. The dirt I got out of that little hole down there gave me over a hundred pieces of gold. So I think it's going to be a good little take. Ooh. 18 months ago, that 100 spec pan peaked out interest in this spot. That's the wrong way! What I didn't know back then was this was going to lead me to a small bonanza just last week. It's a fit. <laughs> so fit. And that's just the thing about prospecting. Your knowledge is far more important than the equipment you use. We're almost there. We've got a little bit of a bedrock crevice here. But the soil the soil's still really sandy so I want to go down a bit further. Down there there was clay. And that's what I want. I think we hit the pay layer. Finally! Oh yeah! Thicker, hard packed clay. This should have gold. Generally speaking, you always find the best gold on the bedrock. But that's not always the case. Check the sand above, because you never know. Seen some fine specks of gold. We've got a little bit of black sand. This is like a 50-50 pan with overburden and the pay layer at the bottom. So, not 100% sure how well we're going to go. Oh yeah, plenty of flower gold, plenty. That bodes well. Let's see if we can get down to 100% pay and then we shouldn't get a diluted pan. Old ground, that has not moved in a while. Dilution is the process of mixing low grade or worthless dirt in amongst your pay dirt that holds the majority of your gold. You want to try to avoid this because it means doing more work for less gold. Not as much black sand. Mm. Oh, we still got good fine gold though. That's easy 50 pieces. That's what test panning is. Gaining the knowledge about your ground. How big is the deposit? How many specs? What kind of gold? How many heavies? All of this helps you pick future equipment and how to work the area. Still a decent spec count. I'm impressed, but I'm not super impressed. It would be good high banking material. I think we'd have a really solid day on that. And a little over a year later, I discovered that high banking this spot will be quite profitable. Even if the spot was guarded by huge wolf spiders, my test pan was so good, so it's funny how that can happen sometimes. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow, oh, there was gold in there. And this is how the day continued, testing different layers to see what kind of gold came out of them. All right, we've got more black sand, so maybe the gold's sitting a little bit higher in that in that gray material. A lot of fine. See, the first pan we had a lot of coarse. Interesting. This is very high bankable. It's not really panning material. After several hours of prospecting, it was time to move to a new spot. Now, I haven't done too many pans from the bottom of that hole, but the gold is so inconsistent. If we were getting consistent, really good pans, it'd be worth panning, but this is definitely a high banking spot because we're not getting less than 20, but the spec size changes. And a high banker, it'd be really quick. This is everything I got out of those few pans 
from the bottom of that hole. So we didn't find a cracking panning spot, we found a pretty good high banking spot. For a number of reasons, we left that spot alone for over 12 months. But when we finally came back to it, after the biggest floods in five years, we were in for a bonanza of gold and crystals. Reedy Creek prospecting. It's simultaneously hot, muggy, and slightly cold, which is strange. We've come down to the panning area, and I look in the creek, and look, look at this unusual thing. Eh, look at that. That has to be the strangest structure for a crystal I've ever seen. The top of it's broken off. It's kind of got like an agate composite because it's got all these different rock riding together. I just aligned all our chakras. All the chakras. Now we're both looking for crystals, and we just discovered what is probably going to be, I don't know, what? Oh, what is that bottle top? Prime Old Tom Distillers. That is a super cool find. So that must be the bottom. I'm going to go with that's the bottom of yeah. a bottle. Un earthenware pottery. Right there. Yeah, just a fragment. My mother always said not to look at my feet when I walked, but I think she was wrong. Oh, I just spotted a good one. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, let's get it to water. Doopy, 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 doopy. Oh! <laughs> oh! What? <laughs> like a pendant already. I don't know if it's glass or a crystal. Do you want to come? It's either glass or a crystal. Oh. Nah, it's a crystal. Oh! oh that's oh, a smoky. How well, you go gold prospecting? You end up spending 10 minutes as a crystal hunter, and that's what you find. Why do I have so much stuff? A high banker is capable of processing a lot of pay dirt using just one man and a petrol engine. Our petrol water pump pumps water into our spray bar system here. There are jets along the edges of these bars that shoot high pressure water into the hopper. I take a shovel of our pay dirt, throw it in the hopper, and the petrol pump washes our dirt for us. That dirt then travels along the sluice box, which has got expanded mesh and astroturf in it. And today I'm running what's called a Javi riffle. The Javi riffle creates extra turbulent water to slow down the gravel so more gold can drop out of suspension. Over a year later, I set about refamiliarizing myself with the ground. I knew the gold was here, but I had to make sure I knew exactly where it was sitting before I started processing it in the high banker. Our testing yesterday showed some pretty decent gold smattered across this whole flat section and that looks like it's staying true. Look at that. That's the amount of gold from one test pan and we're able to process about six pans a minute with this high banker. So in the four hours that I've got to work today, we should get a decent take. Fingers crossed. Now I've had to duct tape it because there's a few leaks going on I've got to address, but nonetheless. All right, first go. Yeah. Well, at least the leak's going that way. It was going that way before. I absolutely love high banking. But I definitely need to mention that it's not legal in every state or every country. So please check your local mining regulations so you don't accidentally get in trouble. Think of high banking like automatic panning. All you've got to do is add the dirt to the system and it does everything else. This means these machines can make even low grade ground profitable. Did that make anyone else want to pee? We gotta do a test pan because for the last 20 shovels I was running something that's very similar to straight clay and there's no point running it if there's no gold in it. I get asked when to clean out your high banker all the time and the easiest way I can tell you to check is to make sure your riffles aren't packed. If you touch the soil in your riffle and it's really firm, it's time to clean out because you probably haven't got your settings right. You want material moving all the time. So we're gonna to touch this and you can see it's still nice and loose. We want to see probably at least five or ten specks to keep continuing into that clay. Oh, we've got that. Oh, we've got that. That's heaps. It's very fine gold, but there is a lot of it. So that should add up super fast through the high banker. 
Well, at least that's the theory, right? Ambitious and hopeful. Power! High banking is a numbers game. Once you establish you have more pay dirt than you can easily pan, it's literally all about shoveling as much as you can into the sluice box. Ooh. I just did another 50 shovels in about, I don't know, 10 minutes? With a lot of digging. Oh my God, look at the gold. There's gold here and there. What I don't want to see is gold down here. If I see gold down here, then I've definitely got to empty the mats. These are all still loose. It'll be collecting, which is the main thing. I might just have a look under the Javi plate and see what's going on, and then make a decision about whether I want to do an early clean out or not. Damn, that's a lot of black sand. Um, I really don't want to have to do a clean out, but I might just do the top piece of miners moss. The amount of black sand and gold I can see on the top of that miner's moss, I think we are going to be in for a very decent cleanup. Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> it's going to be a good day. I have to work. I have to work real hard because I've only got a limited time here. Oh my god! I believe it's going to be a good day. I believe it's going to be a very good day. Bow up! Make no mistake, high banking is hard work. It's just super repetitive digging all day in the sun. There are basically three types of high bankers. This is a mid-sized high banker. These are perfect for one-man operations. You can usually get them reasonably far into the bush on your own, and they'll keep up with one person shoveling all day. Then you have micro high bankers, and these are perfect for putting in a backpack and taking far out of the way, just so you can get a small sample run done, to know if it's worth trying to track bigger equipment in later. And lastly, we have really big high bankers, mega high bankers like my Keen. These are for two or more people to shovel in all day without you having to think about it. But you need a lot of ground to run one of those machines and usually this is more than adequate. And it should also be noted that high bankers are not legal everywhere. We're lucky here in the state of Victoria to be able to use them. But you might not be able to, so please check your local regulations before going out and buying one of those. Some three hours later and the pump has finally run out of fuel, but that gives me a chance to look in the mat. Whoa, look at that flaky, hell yeah. Again, Nothing's packed, so we can keep running. There's one key ingredient you need for successful high banking, and that is an old timer's shoe bottom. Um, I'm calling these the best luck for prospectors, so we just, we keep that on the high banker. Did you see all those bubbles? They could be a major problem, and they're being caused by the Javi Ripple. To fix that problem, I need to install a leveling flat, which is a near future project of mine. Quick test pan to make sure that we're still on it. And yeah, again, super fine gold, but enough of it to keep going. There is at least 30 specks of gold in the pan, and my minimum for high banking is 10. At 10 specks of pan, as long as you've got the quantity of dirt, you can still have a good day, like grand plus. Holy crap, there is gold in every riffle. Look at all those bits. I got pieces of gold here, I got pieces of gold over here. Every single riffle has gold in it. What I'm really checking for is to make sure there's no gold down this third of the sluice, because if there's gold here, we're definitely losing significant gold. Just on that, you're gonna lose gold regardless of the sluice box or the type of system that you're using. Pants, sluices, trommels, dredges, they all lose gold. It's just gotta be within tolerance. All right, look, man, we don't have much time left, so we are gonna do a little clean out from underneath the Javi riffle. I might just test pan and see where the best gold is. So this is unbacked miner's moss, which means that the dirt can actually fall through the other side, which is why we've got a piece of AstroTurf sitting underneath it that is backed. So whatever's actually caught in here is not going to be all the gold that's at the top. We haven't cleaned that AstroTurf out at all. Once again, we're going to clean this up properly at home. This is just to have a look. Oh man, look at the ring of gold at the top. Yeah, there you go. 
Hell yeah. Because the Javi Ripple only has super fine holes in it, we're only collecting the really fine gold up the top. All right, lucky horseshoe. Um, I bless ye with golds and old timey luck. After a touch over four hours of high banking, it was time to do a clean out. The biggest problem with Reedy Creek concentrates is they're full of tin, non-magnetic black sand, that makes it hard to see the gold. And for that reason, I take my concentrates home and clean them up properly with a miller table. Remember, you can always clean gold up at home, but you can only dig it out of the ground on the creek. Spend your time extracting concentrates, not cleaning your gold. Well, I don't think that's even going to work. I was just going to try and swirl it back to show you some of the gold, but it's just all through the sand. Look at the black sand. The black sand in my area is tin, so it's non-magnetic. It's very hard to separate from the gold, but you can see that this sort of very fine gold is just going to be all through that tin. I mean, you can see specks everywhere. This is a job for at home with the miller table. Besides cleaning up those concentrates, there was one other thing I had to do, and that was take advantage of the water in a seasonal creek I'd never seen water in before. And what I found was potential new ground. Just yesterday, Gadzi and I found this interesting deposit in a brand new creek that we've never found gold in before. This creek, I have never seen flow. But because of the floods, we have a trickle of water in here. I mean, this is, this is what it looks like during floods. At the moment, it's quite difficult to get access to this creek, meaning getting a high banker in here is fraught with problems. Whereas the rocker box is actually quite light and easy to get in. The rocker box or gold cradle is not a sluice box. You put dirt into the top classifying plate. You take your ladle on a stick. Fill this bad boy with the water. Pour the water over your dirt. The dirt then lands on the top apron. This is where most of your gold is collected before dropping onto the lower piece of carpet. In this case, I thought I'd put a Javi riffle in here just for some fun and see what it catches. Whilst you're pouring the water, you rock the box side to side like that. That rocking action works the gold into the matting, much the same as what happens when you shake a pan side to side and the gold sinks to the bottom of the riffles. Back in the day, this invention allowed the gold prospectors to process more dirt more efficiently with less water, which is perfect for this little Little seasonal creek. There are a couple of things that you need to know about this ground. The first is that there are no indicator minerals. The reason that there aren't any indicator minerals here is because all of the indicator minerals are iron sulfides. As soon as they come into contact with oxygen, they evaporate. This means that there's no black sand or iron stone. And the gold here is nugget or nothing, meaning you get very little fine gold or you get a chunk. So what we're hoping for today is that we let a chunk roll down our rocker box. And that's our gold. There's a few more micro pieces in there, but that's the main flake that we got from that test pan. You have to kind of think of these machines as old timer high bankers. By today's standards, kind of slow, but back then, an absolute miracle. And I'd be lying if I said that they weren't very messy. They're not the most pretty method of catching gold, that's for sure. I know I said it's nugget or nothing, and that is not a large classifying plate. Exactly why I bought the gold monster out, so I can check for nuggets later. Big, big brain. As I said at the start of the film, this is not a sluice box, and that's why there is no electric pump hooked up to this. There's nothing in there to prevent water washing the gold out other than the shaking action to get the gold to sink into the carpet. If you have constant running water over the top of the carpet, in all likelihood what's going to happen is that there's nothing to stop the water picking the gold up and pushing it out when there's no new material running over the top of it. And the matting is looking well like matting that's been processing dirt. However, in our main pay dirt area, we have hit a boundary layer. This is clay down here. No matter what system you're using, you want to check any changes in your pay dirt because a change could be really good or a change could mean that there's no gold at all and you've got to know what's worth processing. See, I just gave away one of our biggest secrets. I don't know where the gold is. Our gold pans show us. This test pan is the one that's going to tell us whether or not it's worth trying to process that clay. Oh, it's totally worth trying to process that clay because there is still 
gold in it. Just remember, I'm not out here trying to get rich off gold. I'm participating in my hobby, doing a pastime that I think is really cool and fun. And because I know this is nugget or nothing ground, that one speck is an indication of gold. That means if there is a speck of gold in that clay, there's a chance there's a nugget. I'd run a whole bunch of shovels through my rocker box. And I'm kind of curious to know, what's in the apron? I am in no way, shape or form expecting to see a lot of gold. But this is about the experience today and testing the ground. Yeah, yeah, Chris, I know. But now show me the gold. If I'm being completely honest, I am a little bit nervous about what's going to be in this pan because I didn't see a single speck of gold on the way down. And normally you would. So <laughs> here we go. Here goes nothing. No black sands. No heavy indicator minerals. Just paranoia. It can't. Ah. Oh. 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 Look at that bit. Look at that. That is a solid little flake of gold. I am real happy about that piece. And there's a bunch of micro going along with it. Heck freaking yeah. We're going to do more. I'm going to do more. It takes me approximately 50 seconds to fill and then completely empty one hopper in the rocker box. On the same count, it takes me about 3 minutes to fill and process one pan's worth of dirt. So by my hillbilly maths, panning is 3 times slower than rocker boxing. But that might not hold up in court. Oh my god! Is that the head of your enemy? So why am I showing you this at the end of a video that was focused on high banking? Simply put, this gold deposit's going to have to sit in this position until we have the right piece of equipment and the right weather to process it. Remember, it's not the gear you use, it's the knowledge on your ground. Well, I have had my fun for the morning, so we're going to clean out all of it and see what kind of gold we got. I say we, me and um, all my friends. Rocker boxes do produce a lot of concentrates. They simply don't shed off as many of the heavy materials as a sluice box does. And it's for that reason that we wash the mats multiple times to get as much dirt out as possible. I didn't do nearly as many shovels this run as I did the first run. So whatever gold we get in here will be a nice little bonus. The main gold take should be in the mat. What near future Chris didn't know was I was in for a surprise. I mean, let's be real, I probably only did maybe 20 shovels, so if there was any gold in this, I'd be very surprised. Ah, yeah! Ooh, actually, actually, they're nicer than the first run. Those little crunchy bits are nice, but I want to know if we've got any more. The main mat hadn't been checked for either run, so I was hoping there was going to be a few more flakes in there. Well, here we go. This is the first clean out of that mat. Usually, I will have to go home and bash the bejesus out of it in a tub to get all the fine gold to come out of the bottom, but we will do that on the creek after the first pan. I would really hope to see some fine gold, but hey, at least we've got a little bit in the top apron. Anything? Anything? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, they're coarse little bits too. Hell yeah! Look, I know it's not a bonanza, but I'm really happy to have found gold on a creek that I've never found gold before. And with an 1800s technology that was likely used on these very gold fields over 150 years ago. That is some nice coarse chunky gold, and I reckon there's going to be a lot more of it here. I'll let that be a lesson to any claim jumpers. Claim jumpers all buried, it was finally time to go home and end the week with a way up. Have you ever seen a fungus that looks like that before? Looks like the tree sneezed. I'm finally getting around to doing the full clean up from the high banking session that I did. I just wanted to show you what the miller table looks like at 50%. This is where we're up to and we've only gone through one of the two pans that I've got of concentrates. That is looking good. 
Oh man! This week's weigh-in, we're only weighing the gold from the high banker. That's because the rocket box gold is mixed in this snuffer bottle with a whole bunch of other test panning, and I don't want to contaminate the result. With that being said, this is the gold that came out of my high banking session, and I think that is a pretty dang good take. Say what you want about fine flower gold, I love it. And right before we weigh up the gold, I wanted to mention that over on my Patreon account, this month for Christmas, we're giving away two one gram guaranteed gold jars of pay dirt, as well as two gold specimens that I dug out of a hard rock mine. It only costs a dollar to sign up and there's no long term commitment. The link is in the description below if that's something you're interested in. Scales are all teared off and this is a really nice line of gold from Reedy Creek. So I'm going to guess that there's one gram there. Leave your guesses below. Oh, not too bad. Point eight. Five. That gold is worth $71.50 Australian at the time of recording for just three hours on the high banker. Do you reckon I should make a return trip? Thank you so much for watching my film. Please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears for me. Until next time, peace and I'm out.